Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears, and I am very glad you're joining for this powerful message. We are continuing to talk about the secret place, and this is part two in which I will share with you the revelation of the secret place with insight from Smith Wigglesworth. Many people ask me to explain the secret place, and I cannot think of a more important message than the secret place in these, the last of the last days. That place where we are found in Him, that place where we have that holy communion and fellowship, and we walk so united, one with Him. We need to get the revelation of the secret place. Many people in their walk with the Lord have great experiences. Times where they feel that touch of the Lord. We've had people, you know, go out under the Spirit. We've had people experience the joy, all those things. But they are experiences, and of course they fade. What God wants is an encounter, a divine appointment, so that you have a place and a time where you are utterly changed. Like Paul, where he could take you to a place And he could say, it was at this time that I was knocked off my horse and I am never the same since then. You may be carrying a lot of baggage, a lot of hurts, a lot of injuries. You may be struggling with various addictions and problems. You may have run from the Lord. You may be backslidden. These are the last of the last days. And the call of heaven, Jesus is knocking at that door asking to come in that you might have not an experience but a divine appointment so that you have an encounter an encounter where you have your eyes open to see ears to hear and you see jesus fully and you understand fully what he did for you the depth the breadth the height the substance of his love You understand fully who you were, how your sin had done so much damage, the life's wrecked. And then you see the depth of His mercy. And you so cling to it, you so desire it. If you're ready, let's pray and let's press in. And so, Father, we just come hungering. We come with a holy desperation. We come, Holy Spirit, and we so invite you to come. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And let your mighty, wonderful Holy Spirit open the Word, and right now, fill this place and reveal Jesus. Show us Jesus in the Word. And I thank you for a word in season, Father, that ministers to each person, so that not one person leaves the same. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And we are in John chapter 8. And I want to talk about the woman caught in the very act of adultery. Think about it. She is caught in the very act. She has no excuse. She can't deflect it. She can't turn and say, no, you got it wrong. And there has to be a place, there has to be a time where we come and we stand guilty. And we have to stand and recognize before the absolute truth, before the absolute one, We are guilty. We have fallen short. No deflecting. No excuses. This woman stood that day, and all the voices of authority, the scribes and the Pharisees, were there. They had all the evidence. They had the proof. And she was called to be stoned to death. She looked, and she could see the spot that she was on, and realized, this is the place where I die. This is the point in the time where I die. My future is gone. My hope has faded. And all she could do was internally cry out for mercy. The master remained quiet. And that's so important. Because at that moment, so many things were happening. And God was seeking to bring a revelation of the secret place. Of the depth of love. Yet the Pharisees and the scribes who stood there saying, we are righteous, 
We are perfect. This woman is guilty. But they could not feel as the, of the mighty Lord God wrote with his finger on the ground. The one who with his fingers wrote the Ten Commandments, stand, sorry, sitting there and writing on the ground. Every stroke must have pierced their hearts, must have brought such holy conviction because God in his love and his mercy was designed that none of them perish. She remained quiet. The Spirit of God convicting her, challenging her. Then the Lord God challenges the whole group. He who is without sin cast the first stone. The conviction so heavy in the room that not one of them, not one of the so-called righteous, they had to declare, I am not righteous and had to leave. But they would not look to Jesus, then make me righteous. The only woman person left was the woman. And in John chapter 8, verses 10 through 12, it says, When Jesus had raised himself up, he got up, and saw no one but the woman, he said to the woman, Where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. Then he spoke, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He then told her, go and sin no more. He was the answer. That woman followed Jesus afterwards because everything changed. She died that day. Smith Wigglesworth said, the Lord despises, sorry, the Lord desires a broken and contrite heart. Smith Wigglesworth said, the Lord never despises, I'm going to get a break so I get that, okay. Smith Wigglesworth said this, the Lord never despises a broken and contrite heart. If you want to reach and touch the very heart of the Father, to lay hold of His mercy, to experience the secret place, it comes out of a broken and contrite heart. Like this woman, where everything that day is all over. And until it gets real, until we get to the place of true desperation, till we get hungry enough, desperate enough, until we recognize all the lives that we are impacting and what is at stake, and that there's got to be a change. I can't go on this way, but today, God, would you so meet with me? Today, and I'm standing here broken. I'm standing here completely defeated, completely given over. Here I am, God. I'm on this altar. And you will find that God comes and meets with you. Jesus was there in that silence seeking to minister, seeking to convict, pouring out His mighty Spirit. The Spirit was so moving. Oh, in this wonderful place, the Spirit of God begins to move and so convict us, not condemn us, but He will surely convict, surely expose every ounce of darkness, everything we've held on to, every bitterness, every hurt, every memory, all those things flood so that we might place them on the altar that this day, they might be addressed. Smith went on to say, every place that God brings you into a rising tide of perfection is a place of humility, brokenness of heart, and fullness of surrender, where only God can rule in authority. It is not where you are somebody, but where God is everything, and where you'll be living for His glory. I pray you got that. Let me read it again. Every place that God brings you uh, to in a rising tide of perfection is a place of humility, brokenness of heart, and fullness of surrender, where only God can rule in authority. It is not where you are somebody, but where God is everything, and where you will be living for 
His glory. Oh, we so walk thinking we are somebody. The Pharisees and scribes thought they were somebody. But they didn't appreciate who was there that day. The Almighty One. The One they were supposed to worship. The Holy One. They didn't realize the full blasphemy of what they were doing. How they were attacking and going after the Almighty God. Oh, they were so blinded they could not see. But that day, that woman, the sinner, the one caught in the very act, the one totally disqualified and knew it. The rest were disqualified but didn't recognize it because they saw themselves as somebody. And there's something when we come in that place of brokenness and we recognize, God, I am a nobody. And I see who I really am. And I suddenly realize who you are. And I absolutely need you and need your great mercy in my life. I've heard about this, but I needed to know it. It's not good enough to stay in that place of knowing about salvation. Oh, I've heard. I get all these scriptures coming to mind. But today, I need to know them. Today I need to die. Today the seed needs to go into the ground. And everything must change. See, real change doesn't start outwardly. It starts inwardly. And it starts when I come and finally say, God, you can have the secret place of my heart. That's where the treasures are. That's where everything I want, everything desire. All my hurt, all my injuries, all my memories, all these things we store. My cares, my worries, my lusts, my goods, all stored. And it's the one place we are so reluctant to give. But when I come and I say, God, I open it up and I'm telling you, you will be broken. Because when you open it up, he opens up the secret place of his heart and says, come in. And that's the time, that's the place where everything suddenly changes and He comes in His absolute full authority. He comes and shakes. Smith said, I say often, sorry, I often say there is no more done in seeking than in any other way. We have to get to a place where we know that unless we meet face to face with God, and get all crooked places out of our lives. There will be no room for the Holy Spirit, for the indwelling presence of God. But when God gets a chance at us, and by the vision of the blood of Jesus, we see ourselves as God sees us, and then we have a revelation. Without this, we are undone and helpless. See, God does not want to leave you in that place. He did not want to leave any that came into the temple that day the same. But the only one that got the breakthrough was the guilty one, was the one who humbled herself and was desperately crying out for mercy in that place. I'll read this again. Smith says, I say there is, there's more done in seeking than in any other way. We have to get to a place where we know that unless we meet face to face with God and get all of the crooked places out of our lives. There will be no room for the Holy Spirit, for the indwelling presence of God. But when get, God gets a chance at us, and by the vision of the blood of Jesus, we see ourselves as God sees us, and then we have a revelation. Without this, we are undone and helpless. Because it's in this place all of a sudden where I am guilty, unworthy, where all of a sudden my eyes are opened and I see by the mighty Holy Spirit what Jesus did on the cross. I see the blood and I see the depth of his love. And in that place, it swallows me. In that place, it wrecks me and it lifts me and it brings me into something into a place where I start to see myself as He does.
the place that my mind cannot comprehend, my emotions cannot even begin to fathom. I stand clean. I stand pure. I stand in the place before Him, made righteous, not by my doing, but by His. Free. That woman, she sits there broken, surrounded by her accusers that at any moment could begin throwing stones. She's probably imagined how much it would hurt, how long before she would die. And the must God have mercy, save me. Her accusers flee. And so could she. But she would not. And so often the pressure and our flesh says, get out of here. I can't take the conviction. There is a way out. And we flee. But if we will linger, if we will stay a little longer in His presence and go past the conviction, past that place, because unless we are wholly convicted, wholly wrecked by His love, we will never be changed. Until we truly appreciate the depth of our sin and the consequences, we will never appreciate the depth of mercy given, the wonderful cleansing that you stand clean, forever grateful. Oh, it will so change you because you will always realize He had mercy on me. He changed me. His mercy was so great. I was so guilty, but I stand clean. I stand in the secret place of His presence, face to face. I look into His eyes. I can come back close. I know that when I pray, He hears me. I'm clean. I'm pure, not by my doing, but by what He did. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. One of my favorite verses. Listen very carefully. And we have known and believed. We have known and believed the love of God has for us. And I just want to stop there. I know the next says God is love. That's the part everybody talks about, God is love. But they've never experienced it because it's not the love the world's talking about. And you have to come to the place where you have an encounter with it and you can try and say, I have known and I believe. Because I've seen what that love did. I've seen the price it paid. I recognized how far I was away from Him. I realized how guilty I was. And I see how wonderful that love is. And I know it. I can never be shaken by this. You cannot shake me regarding His love for me. You cannot shake me. Listen, there is no going back. That woman could never go back to her old life. Because everything changed and died that day. She was not looking for a way out. See, many people, and she could have fled She could have said, oh, if my accusers are gone, I'm going back. But she was like, no, I'm holding to the horns of the altar, laying my life down, God, because I don't want to go back. And I cannot do this without you. There are many reasons. Maybe financial, we don't know. But in that moment, not one of those things mattered. Only meeting Him, only knowing His mercy, only having an encounter where she was changed. She was exposed, bare, standing before the Lord God Almighty. Oh, it's a painful place. It's not a fun place. But it's also the place when you go through it, where you have the greatest joy and you stand secure. Smith will go on to say, He can prepare you for that place that you can never prepare for except by a broken heart and a contrite spirit, except by yielding to the will of God. If you will come with a whole heart to the throne of grace, God will meet you and build you on His spiritual place. There is this place where God will not abandon 
There is a place that so touches his heart that he will come and he will meet with you. Heart to heart, that is the secret place. Where it's so real, there is no games. There is no following traditions. There's no formulas. There's no putting on a show. This is real. I've come to meet with you. I've come knowing I must have to meet with you this day, right now. And when you get this, and you come and you open up the heart, because it is heart to heart, that's the revelation of the secret place. It is a heart to heart being real. And God turns up real to you. His love is real. He gives you eyes to see the true depth, the revelation of His love. You cannot walk away the same. You cannot do the old because you abhor it. You hate it. You see the truth. This is why this, this place is a place of death because you truly now fully understand sin and you hate everything about it. You see the whole world differently, not to condemn, but through that love, how these people are held captive by sin and need Jesus. And they need to see the depth of that love. And it's revealed through people, human vessels, wrecked in the secret place. Smith went on to say, For I was alone with God. Then he gave me a revelation. Oh, it was wonderful. He showed me an empty cross and Jesus glorified. I do thank God that the cross is empty, that Christ is no longer on the cross. Then I saw God had glor uh, sorry, then I saw God had purified me. I was conscious of the cleansing power of the precious blood of Jesus. I cried out, clean, clean, clean. I was filled with the joy of knowing that I had been cleansed. There is this place, Holy Spirit, even right now. Would you open eyes to see? Would you open ears to hear? Would you so meet with us here right now? Father, we're in the last of the last days. Jesus, you're coming back for church without spot or wrinkle. So now is the time of cleansing and purifying. Let that cleansing wind blow, blow on our hearts, blow on our whole being right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And so show us a revelation of the cross, empty, because Jesus, you are no longer on it, no longer suffering, having won the complete victory and having made an open triumph. It was my sin that took you to the cross. It was my sin that you bore on the cross. It was my guilt. It was the price. It was everything on that cross. And now you cleanse me by your blood and I stand pure. Now you wash me and it is gone. Forgiven, forgotten, here in the secret place, heart to heart. Father, do a heart surgery on each person listening and watching in the name of Jesus. Father, touch them so they are never the same. Let your word penetrate until it impacts, until it reverberates in every fiber of their being, washed by the blood. Let them know the love. Let them be wrecked and swallowed up in the love. Oh, Father, let wrong mindsets crumble. Soul ties flee. We break them. And let this day be a day of complete weakness of ourself. But this place becomes the point where we become strong in you. We are forever gone of the old, crucified of the old man. And this is the day we step in. Having put off the old, we put on the new. Holy Spirit, come in such a mighty breath. Come and move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Smith said, keep us, Lord, in a place of buying up opportunities, burning up bridges, paying the prices, denying ourselves so that we might be worthy of being your own forever. Jesus, this place, may we burn all the bridges. There's no going back. Oh, that place of silence, that place where we die, that place 
Father, where we come face to face first with ourselves and recognize and we face truth, Father God, and we crumble and break and pour out. We stop deflecting. We stop blaming. We stop saying, but God, I'm the victim. We look and see you were the only true victim in this day. As we allow your price to be paid and we receive that cross and we receive the washing of the blood, we become the victor. We become forever set free, not because we deserve it of ourselves, but because of you, Jesus, and the depth of your love. So we need that revelation. It's here in this abiding place, heart to heart, found in you, that we become clean, pure, the victor, free from the past. This is the place where we can move forward. This is the place we can go and sin no more. This is the place where we discover that he is the light of the world. And that light now shines in our eyes so that we see things from a new perspective. Because it's the light that shines on your eyes that has captured your heart, that will cause you to see or perceive and gain information in this world. You're either moved by the natural light or you're moved by His light. If His light has captured you in the secret place, then His Word becomes the authority. And you walk by the Spirit, no longer under condemnation, but accepted and precious in the beloved. You stop seeing yourself naturally. You stop seeing the old person that you hated, but you see through this new light, the one redeemed, the one accepted in the beloved. It's a heart-to-heart -heart experience. In Matthew 8, verses 1 through 3, it says a leper came to Jesus. This is when he had come down from the mountain, a great multitude was following him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Oh, stop for a minute and think. There was a lot of people there that day that had an experience, but were not changed. But that man, disqualified, that man who should not be there, the one under the condemnation, the one guilty, the one the crowd abhorred, the one the crowd pointed their finger at, the one who dared and said, Jesus, I need you. Make me clean. Because it's only when he makes us clean that we are changed. That's the place, heart to heart, that you are forever a different person, forever changed. There's a weight lifted. There's nothing like standing clean and pure. And the Lord God says, I am willing. Let me finish with this from Smith Wigglesworth. Anything that hinders me from falling into the ground and everything that interferes with my taking up my cross, dying to self, separating from the world, cleansing my life up, or entering through the narrow gate, anything that interferes with that is Satan's power. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. And you will remain alone. Everybody pointing at you. Everybody condemning you. Or you die that day. And the new man that lives is found in him. The new man is found heart to heart in the secret place. And you receive his love. And you allow that love to permeate every fiber of your being. And you begin to see and think and act and walk differently. Unmoved. Because it's not the voice of the crowd. See, the woman, when she entered in, the authority was the scribes and the Pharisees. But when she left, the authority was Jesus. The one whose words remained. The ones whose words changed. The ones whose words gave her the breakthrough gave her the judgment in her favor, was Jesus. And you need to hear His words, because only His words matter. Only His words change things.
His words have the power to cause the crowd to flee, your accusers to get out of the way. And His words can permeate and penetrate every fiber of your being right here, right now, in the name of Jesus, so that you are utterly, completely free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In the secret place of His presence, if you will dare come, if you will say here, I give you my heart, and I understand it's not easy. I understand there may be many baptisms of tears, of pouring out, of brokenness. There may be many issues that come up, hurts of the past, offenses, all these things that have become lowered in our life, addressed, brought up, to be placed on the altar, given over, yielded, surrendered. But what if I don't get justice? You get justice in Jesus. Stop looking there and start looking to Jesus. This day is the day of change. This is the day of your breaking through. This is the day where you are to gain the revelation of the secret place. The invite to come and sup with Him. The invite to come and to know Him. As He says in John chapter 17, Eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus. To have this intimacy of fellowship where you are forever changed, forever real. Walking in truth, clean, pure, accepted, being changed utterly on the inside. And as you abide in this sacred place, as you continue here, you will never be the same. A transformation will begin from the inside out. The things that once trapped you lose their luster, and He becomes your all in all. I pray this message has blessed you, and I'm standing in agreement with you right now in the name of Jesus, that the mighty Holy Spirit will come and just breathe on you, and give you eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart even right now. So that as you open the Word, the Word will be rich in revelation and speak to you with such holy conviction that you might know that love right now, not sometime in the future, but know it right now and believe in it. May it come as a mighty force in your life, shaking everything that needs to be shaken and bring you to the place where you are unmovable in Him. No longer moved by the words of people, the condemnation of this world, but secure, free, loved, and accepted in Him. Amen. Well, this message has blessed you and ministered to you. In the name, above all names, in the name of Jesus, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you truly help us in this time of great censorship. And these, the last of the last days, to reach as many people. Because it's a time for the backsliders. It's the time for the church to awaken and come to that place of abiding in the secret place of holy fellowship and intimacy with Him. The place, because that's the place where we truly start to love. We walk and act and speak in His love. Forever broken, forever tenderized, forever with an afterglow of His love. Amen? Well, I want to thank you. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Just give that to me. Mm. You know, when Paul was knocked off his horse and had that divine appointment, it was a light that blinded him, brought him to the place where all his traditions, all that learning, all that he knew was making him blind. And he had to see things with a new light. Had to have his eyes open to see things with a new light. This woman had to see things with a new light. Jesus, I am that light. And he's saying to you, he is the light in this hour. We allow him to show you. We allow him to open your eyes so that his light might permeate and begin to show you things from his perspective. Amen. Well, I pray that you're blessed and encouraged. And as always, I remind you, this is the day the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for him in the name above all names the name of jesus we pray amen and amen thank you